Thank you very much, Moan. Just wait for the slides to get loaded up. Okay, so, so far we've heard from our speakers what I would call big picture ideas, things that are, um, you know, talking millions of dollars and things that are um, big picture stuff. What I'm gonna to talk to you about is the nuts and bolts of once you have evaluation and you have these big numbers of, of what things are worth, how do you confirm that the valuation is actually correct? Um, you know, I think it's pretty clear from the conference in general and today that intellectual property is like currency. And so you have to confirm its value. Um, and if you don't understand the source of that value and how to confirm it, then um, you might get ripped off. So what I do in my practice is I, you know, I do, I do a number of things. I'll obtain patents or I'll litigate patents, but the other third of my practice is to work on transactions where I conduct due diligences and investigations on intellectual property portfolios to confirm for my clients who are either venture capitalists or other companies the value that they think that the IP is worth that they're buying. And so in IP due diligence, it's like, like looking in someone's closet and seeing all the dirty laundry that might be in there or seeing that things are in nice order and such. But it's definitely um, something that should be done before you actually transact money for what you want to buy. And, and a good example of this is recently I was working on a transaction at the very beginning of it, and the, um, this was back in November, and the client wanted to go, wanted to close a $10 million deal at the beginning of January. Um, and this was in November. And so first of all, I think I was gonna be on vacation at the beginning of January, but you know, being a service, service provider, I you know, wanted to make the client happy, and I told them we would, we would look at this. And the first thing that we, um, what, what the client wanted to do was buy branding rights, trademarks, um, and no patents, but on products that are being sold all over the world. And this company that, that they're, they were negotiating with, they were paying um, licensee fees to a company that purported to have, or at least at one point in time, had the registration rights for these brands that they were buying. And all it took was one $300 search to determine that the rights that they thought they were gonna be buying were owned by another company. And so, um, when I first met this client, they were so anxious to get the deal done, they wanted to spend the money, they wanted to move forward, but now, of course, things have stopped. And part of the due diligence now is about figuring out exactly what is owned and what is being registered and to the extent that they will still want to use the, uh, the valuation that they had, the, um, the target company, the, the, per the seller has to clean up their, their portfolio before we do give any money. Um, I won't go into the various ways that you can determine value because I think that's been discussed in other sessions, but basically you can look at how much it costs to obtain it um, if it's gonna cost you more money to you know, design around a particular innovation, then it might be more cost effective just to purchase it. Um, there's also the market and income, how much money is being made by it, and you can judge, judge it that way. The market is more like looking at comparisons. If there are similar rights purchased in a prior transaction, you can use that as a comparable in order to determine value for the current transaction that you're working on. So the objectives of intellectual property due diligence is no, no IP problems. But the reality though is that once you dig into someone's closet and you start looking around and seeing things, oftentimes you figure out that there are lots of problems. Um, and so what you have to do is you have to you know, evaluate and prioritize 
can quantify all of the particular risks that are involved. Um, and once you identify that there are any risks, some attorneys will, will say, oh, you don't want to do the deal, and they'll kill the deal. But if you're creative, you're going to want to figure out a way to continue the deal. And usually that's how you, the way you do that is you allocate the risks. You make sure that, if, for instance, there's a risk of, of, um, of infringement, then you would allocate the risk of infringement if it comes true to the seller and the way and you would um, reserve some funds to, to maybe um, alleviate the risk for a certain period of time if, if in fact the infringement risk comes true. Um, the other part of the goal is to make sure that the target company has sufficient rights and owns either through outright ownership of the rights or through, through a license of some sort. Because um, once you go through the process and you spend the money, you want to make sure that what you have is what you thought you had. And um, in the situation where we had that I just mentioned, if my client had spent $10 million to purchase these rights, they would have learned very quickly that they, um, other people could be coming into the, into the space and basically copying them, and they would have no recourse. So I think um, what Doug mentioned was that part of the, what, what his thing is, his, uh, his software, one of the things you do is you can catalog and identify the IP assets that you have and put it in a way where it's analyzing it, comparing it, and trying to find synergies. Well, that's a lot what we do in IP due diligence as well. We have to figure out what is it we're buying um, and then look at the scope of the rights. If it's a patent, look at the claims. Um, compared to the products that are being sold, and then evaluate whether or not the rights are valid in view of, you know, if it's a patent in view of prior art, or whether or not the IP is being respected by competitors who may be infringing those rights, and um, and also whether or not you, if there's any license rights that need to be looked at as well. So the pitfalls that normally are identified that you look for are whether or not I mentioned earlier ownership. Um, whether or not there's patents or renewals um, or trademarks, whether or not the patents have been maintained or the trademarks have been renewed on time, 